Good evening, everybody. I'm not quite used to that light yet. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. I know you've been thanked once, but uh, they often call me the person that spends the money on services at Alpha Point, and I certainly appreciate your help. Um, I've had the pleasure of working at Alpha Point for nearly 20 years. Thank you. Thank you. When I first came to Alpha Point, I was uh, an idealistic 20-something that just wanted to help others and make a difference. I had a full head of hair as well. Um, <clears throat> at that time, I didn't really know anybody who was blind. I bet some of you came here tonight and you don't know someone who's blind. Um, today, I bet I know people, more people who are than who are not. <laughs> Things change. Um, during this time, I've had very few people that were close to me that needed Alpha Point's assistance. I knew some folks that had a parent that lost some vision, but I'd not had someone who I knew very well go through vision loss until this last year. <clears throat> I've known our speaker since 1993. Uh, he's been an impromptu marital counselor. Uh, he's been a, a big brother, uh, a pastor, and a dear friend. Uh, he was there the day my wife and I bought our first home. And uh, he was there when uh, my kids came into the world. <laughs> I like him, you can tell. That's why my, lip, that's why my lip's quivering. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Dave Albright's many good things. But most of all, he's a good friend. Uh, when he began to lose his vision a year ago, it was heartbreaking to watch. Um, it was so gratifying to know that, uh, that I, that we at Alpha Point, had a, a team of competent, skilled, and proven people that I could confidently lead him to and trust in his safety, in his growth, and his future were in their hands. He can tell this story a lot better than me, so please join me in welcoming my friend, David Albright. Wow, that was quite an opening. Um, I'm gonna go off script right away. And my wife is saying, he's off script, he's off script. It has been wonderful tonight to be with you all. Um, my dad and I went to the Wood Kansas City Woodworkers Guild recently. I have to tell this story because my dad is 84 and, and it's been traumatic for my dad and my mom to, to watch me go through this too. So dad and I are at the Woodworkers Guild. It's Christmas. It's been a catered event like this and we go through and we get our food and then we go down and we sit down and dad's been around me at Thanksgiving and whatnot. So I don't know what happened, but Dad started, as we're sitting there eating with the guys, you know, he, Dad is starting to say, okay, that's, that's a little bit of dressing, you know, I get my fork in the dressing, and I'm eating, and I get a little turkey, and he has to announce to me everything, and I'm thinking, to, how can I tenderly say to my dad, it's okay, and I, and I, I stop, I, I finally turn to him, and I said, you know, being blind is kind of fun. I mean, every time you get your fork into food, first off, that's a, that's a plus. Second of all, if you give it to your mouth, that's another plus. So, and I'm not wearing my food. So I finally, I said that to him and he, he kind of, you know, tenderly got it that I didn't need to be told every single time. And it was, it was, I'm trying to help my dad get through this and it was an interesting event. So I know you all have fun tonight. Uh, Clay, I want you to watch, you know, how many people tonight really ate with their fingers? Raise your hands. Come on, tell me the truth now. How many ate, okay. All right. How many, how many people found butter on their fingers? Yeah, yeah, you did, didn't you? Okay, yeah. My daughter was saying she had butter on her glass. It's like, whoop, whoop, butter on her glass at one point. I have a couple of three things I want to do tonight, real quickly. Tonight, Clay is asking me to talk and tell my story, but as I was thinking about my story, I was, I was realizing I'm representing clients who have been at Alpha Point in the past, and the clients that are there tonight, or to, this week, and the clients that will be there in the months to come. 
the story I want to tell you real quickly is it's unique to me, but as, as I listen to the clients at Alpha Point, their stories are all similar in some way. They're a story of trying to reconnect with their lives. They've gone blind for whatever reason, and they're trying to reconnect their, their, uh, their lives. David said earlier out in, the, whoops, out in the hallway, you know, it was just about adapting. And he's so right, it is about adapting. I have only been blind, like Clay said, just around a year, and it has been an interesting year to go through. Let me jump into my story here. Thank you. Um, I started at Hallmark Cards in 1972. Through my career at Hallmark, I was a photographer, and I was a videographer, and I did a lot of sound work. If any of the women in here ever bought keepsake ornaments, they, will, they would have bought probably one of my, my uh, products. I always put sound in some of the ornaments. The art director from Keepsakes would come to me and they would say, hey, we need sound in this. Maybe we need a, a pinball machine. One of the great ones we did was when we went out to Worlds of Fun and did roller coasters, and we had roller coaster sounds inside that, that little ornament. The, one of the milestones of, of keepsakes and putting sound in, in an ornament was the one that I did with my daughter when she was four years old, and she did the Christmas story from the Bible. My wife would read it to her, and then uh, my daughter would repeat it back, and then, it would go, and then we got into an ornament. It was just a very cute little battery-operated ornament. The other thing that you did, I know that everybody in the room got one of these at one point. I was a part of the team that did song cards. So at Hallmark, you know, there was, a, there was three of us in the sound team, and we did, for the first two years, we did song cards. So it, I'm sure that everybody in here either got one from a relative or a coworker, or you bought one for someone. The other part of my career was about photography and videography. I worked in the creative area, in the creative arena, and as I did that, you know, Hallmark would send me around. We'd, Hallmark, I, I was very fortunate and blessed to work there. And they sent me all over the country, and we would videotape and interview artists that were hallmarkers, that were doing something special. We were doing gathering research. Quite a while back, you know, in the 90s, that seems like a weird thing to say. In the 90s, um, trends would come over from Europe. And trends would usually start in Europe, and they'd come to the United States, and it would take a couple years for a trend to get to the United States. Well, Hallmark needed to track those trends. So Hallmark was real quick to send a small team of us and we'd go, to, we'd go out to uh, uh, Milan, Italy, or we'd go to Paris or London or Germany, and we would track trends. So that got me traveling around the world, and it was really fun. I, I'm not saying all these things to brag about what I, I, brag about what I did, but I, I wanted you to see the world that I lived in. As I moved on in my career and toward the end of it, I, I found myself partnering with a friend of mine at church, and we were helping missionaries, and we were supporting them by doing DVDs, and those DVDs were helping the missionaries raise their funding. So I would do some of the videotaping in my front room, but I might find myself in Guatemala or Poland doing, suddenly doing videotaping and doing interviews of, with the missionaries to help them with raise their funding. About 10 years ago, my right eye um, started having problems with it. We were working on song cards, started having problems with my eye, and ended up seeing Dr. Fletcher here in Kansas City, and realized that we were having a retina problem. It was becoming detached on, this, on just the right eye, and went to several places and, and had other doctors talk about it and confirm it. Even ended up going to Emory in Atlanta to talk to a specialist there. But everybody said the same thing, David, we can't help you. You're losing your right eye. We cannot get the retina back on. They'd done several procedures, operations, but they just was not going to hold. And they said, we're sorry, but you've got a left eye, and it's a good eye. Let's just protect it and keep it safe, and it will never happen to that eye. Well, those ended up being famous last words, of course. And so two years after that, my left eye, let me tell you this, Dr. Fletcher and I became good buddies. So he, I've got him on speed dial now, so I can talk to him So if anything happens. So sure enough, two years later, I have a little problem with my left eye. We immediately go in there. I'm kind of freaking out. My wife is saying, call Dr. Fletcher. We get right in there. And Dr. Fletcher is able to do a couple 
uh, laser surgery procedures in office, and it holds. And that does pretty well. That's okay. That's great. Okay, fast forward a little bit further. Two years later, Jane and I find ourselves in a position where I could retire early. And I thought, well, you know, I've, I've lost one eye. I've had trouble with this left one. You know, I would like to take up fly fishing. I'd like to do some woodworking. I've got some video work I still want to do on my own. So I left Hallmark. I retired and came home and did that. And that worked. That was a lot of fun. I had a ball fly fishing all the time, doing some amazing woodworking. It was just a real, it was a real education for me. So let's see, at that point, everything was going along pretty well. I'm, I'm retired. Let me gather my thought. One of the things about not, not being blind and not having notes, you have to think about, okay, where am I at in my speech here? What am I doing now? Um, okay, so I, I'm retired. I've, I've got my woodworking going and fly fishing is going really well. So I've had that one incident going on with my eye. So, at, oh, I think, I'll, I'll fast forward to the next one. Oh, I know, one of the things when I was retired, I did some video work. And that video work got me into Africa. I was in South Africa twice. I went to Ghana at one point, working for Women International, Women Vision International. I actually did some work for Ethiopia. So now I have traveled for Hallmark. I've traveled on my own. I even went to Haiti pre-earthquake for St. Paul's School on Main Street. So I finished up those kind of things and really, really was having a good time while I was retired. Let's fast forward a little bit more now and go to, to 2013. It's Thanksgiving uh, and it's the weekend after Thanksgiving. And I realized something's wrong with my, right, my left eye now. So I called Dr. Fletcher again and we go in and we start doing um, laser surgery. But this time it's not working quite the same. It's not working very well. So from December to March, I ended up having four operations. During that time period, my vision just keeps going down and down. And as you can imagine, I'm just getting nervous. Uh, suddenly realized that I was claustrophobic. I had never been claustrophobic before. I had some panic attacks. I had some anxiety attacks. I didn't know there was a difference. And suddenly I'm having either one. It's just like, okay, this isn't a whole lot of fun. Um, I, I was at a point where my wife and daughter had to be with me pretty much most of the time. My world had shrunk from going all over the world to basically a five foot diameter around my foot. You know, it just was a real tiny place. It was very scary for me. I was very dependent on my wife. She couldn't go to the store. If she left and went to the store, had to do something outside of the house and I couldn't go with her, you know, we had somebody come over and stay with me just to keep me from being too anxious or to keep me from having a panic attack. And this is all happening, and about the, about the fourth operation, Dr. Fletcher and I have been talking about what's next and what to do. And he had mentioned right away, he had mentioned Alpha Point. You need to, well, we're going to send you over there when the time's right. At the fourth operation, he and I both kind of had this come to the mountain meeting and said, okay, it's time to go. And I was great because at that point, I know I'm calling my buddy Clay Berry. And Clay plugged me in, and we started going to Alpha Point. I met the staff over there. Uh, just, just in meeting the staff and them telling me and being able to talk to me about, here are the steps we're going to do, David. And the first three weeks you're going to be here, we're going to evaluate you. We're going to give you some things that you need to do and perform for us. And we want to see how you do. And at the end of that three weeks, then we're going to set out a course plan for the next 10 weeks of what we're going to do to help you. And it was about adapting, like David said earlier. It, just, it was all about adapting. So I'm, I'm now at Alpha Point. I'm in the evaluation part of the, the uh, program. The first day on the program, I get there, and it kind of just going through this process, I'm, I'm building confidence again. You know, it's, it's just a real struggle, but I'm starting to build my confidence. I'm starting to feel like, you know, maybe I can make this happen. Maybe this is going to work for me. And the first guy I get introduced to is a guy named Jim Carey, and he's a mobility instructor. And he shows me my, he comes up to me and says, here's your new white cane. It's your new best friend. And so we go off and we start walking down Prospect, down the sidewalk. And he's giving me instructions and he's seeing how I do. And we're, I'm sweeping the cane out there back and forth, and 
making sure I keep with the grass and the sidewalk and I can kind of, I have a line now that I can follow and I'm not just wandering out into traffic. We end up coming up to an intersection. That's a little scary for the first time when you're blind. So I get up there and, you know, Jim is talking to me about traffic patterns and listening to the cars and listening to the flow. And, you know, as you're standing there and you hear the motor rev up and the car goes straight ahead, you know that he's, you know, he's not, he's just going straight ahead and you can get out there. The problem is if you listen to that car and that car motor kind of revs up a little bit, you know, and then it kind of dies off, he's probably turning right in front of you. So you're, you're kind of starting to work this a little bit. Now he's not giving me really instructions, he, or he's not training me at that point, he's really just kind of giving me some basic information. But I'm an old boy scout, so I'm making a mental note, okay? You know, I, I'm, I'm making mental notes along the way as how this is gonna work. Another individual I met there was Michelle. Michelle was the daily living activity director and, and she helped us with this, everything about just daily living. What's in the kitchen, how to do my own laundry, you know, just a lot of things. And Alpha Point has a wonderful kitchen, and she takes me in there and she shows me the, the, the refrigerator, and it's all stocked with all sorts of food, and, and the sink, and the, and the cabinet, and you know, the, here, here are the sponges, and different things, paper towels, whatever, and she shows me the stove, and we talk about that. And then she says, go, go to the other side of the room for just a minute for me. So I get my cane, I go to the other side of the room, and I hear her kind of puttering, and what's going on? And she's got stuff on the floor, it sounds like. Well, she made two messes, and she tells me this. She says, David, I've made two messes. One's on the floor, and one's on the countertop. I want you to come over and clean up the one on the floor. Thought, okay, fine. So she's evaluating how I do, and I'm a good boy scout, so I get down on my hands and knees, and I've got this pattern going. I, I've got this figured out, I know how to do this. And I come this way from it, and I go this way from it, and I get it all in the dustpan, and I stand up very proudly, and hey, how'd I do? And she said, well, you know, David, you did fine. David, what if that had been glass? If you dropped a glass of milk? And I'm thinking, oh, yeah, what if? So we start talking about that process. Now, I, I figured out, I'll tell you this now, Michelle kind of a, has a feisty side to her. So she said there's a mess on the countertop. I go over there, and I'm looking at the countertop, and I'm thinking, okay, fine. I'm not looking at it. I'm feeling it with my hands, and I get into this, this, this stuff's kind of sticky. And I, I kind of pick it up, and she said there's no glass, so I'm kind of, okay. So I kind of smell it, and it's like, oh, it's honey. Well, Michelle didn't have a little puddle of honey. She dumped out the whole bear all over the countertop. So here I am, I'm having to, I, she was feisty. Anyway, all those things are helping build my confidence. And they're helping building the confidence of all the clients who go through Alpha Point. Jim Fettgether, we were talking about him at our table tonight. He is so patient. Jim Fettgether is, is an individual who teaches, trains everybody on the computers, Macs or PCs. And I was a complete geek. And I had both Macs and PCs in my studio at Hallmark and at home. And so Jim has worked with me. And I'm, I'm back up and running on the Mac. PC I'm not doing so well on, but I need more time there. Just all the individuals there, Diane, who did a lot of testing and, and did a lot of counseling, all the individuals, all the, all the instructors there at Alpha Point have been really building my confidence in me, but not just for me, but for all the clients who go through there. Some of the clients come in, and they come in and they need a lot of help. They're scared, they're really frightened. I was frightened, but that left me pretty quickly because of my makeup and because of my family and my friends. And, and my church, and, and I just was more receptive to getting through that very quickly, and I was happy about that. There are a lot of clients that don't do quite as well, and they need a little more hand-holding. It's just, it's, everybody's a little bit different, just like you all are out there are. So it just it was real helpful for Alpha Point to be just so flexible and adapting for us and to build our confidence back up. Tonight, I just want to take Reinhardt has thanked everybody for coming and thanked the sponsors. It is with, I, I just, it's hard to get the words together. It is with a lot of thank you that we really, the clients at Alpha Point, if they were here on stage with me tonight, if you could visualize them on stage, you could see them and we would all say thank you together. We would all appreciate so much 
Just you being here is a big deal. I realize that you're financially supporting Alpha Point, but the other part of that is just being here for us, physically being with us, being able to talk to us. You know, we really, it helps build our confidence. Tonight, I, I have done a lot of adapting, and I thank all my friends who have helped me at Alpha Point and the instructors and Clay and Reinhardt and everybody. And I, I want to thank you for the, all your help and your financial support. Tonight I can say to you very clearly that there are two things that I know that I'm not going to be able to do. Oh, wait a minute. I want to go back one second. I'm sorry. You don't have notes, so you lose track. Um, I talked about fly fishing. I talked about woodworking. You know, I am happy to tell you that I'm doing a lot of fly fishing. In fact, it was last summer there was a moment when I was on the river and I actually caught two fish at one time. I'll tell you about that some other day, but, you know, woodworking. Wood, woodworking has been a big love of mine. I am back. I've made a couple of different items right now and hope to do more in the future. Woodworking is scary for everybody. My dad panics every time I talk about it, but that's, you know, I'm doing it very safely. That, that brings me to my last thing. It's just, I know there are two things that I, I'm not going to do in life. I know that tonight, my wife is not going to let me drive home. <laughs> I also know that my, my uh, application for NASA and to go to the International Space Station is going to get rejected. Outside of that, there's not too much I'm not going to do. It just depends upon what I want to do and where I want to go. I'm on this journey. It's a very interesting journey. My family is supporting me. It's, it's a learning curve for all of us. But I, I, tonight, thank you. Thank you much so much for your financial support, for being here, and God bless you. Thank you.